Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. In today's video I will be focusing on the wonderful state of Florida. Some of you may remember that I've already done an invasive species episode on Florida, but as it's one of the worst affected area for invasive species in the world, I had to do a part two. One of the reasons why Florida has so many invasive species is because of its unique climate. Florida has a humid subtropical climate, which means many exotic non-native species can thrive there. In many parts of the US, people are allowed to keep tropical pets. This is because in many areas, if they were released into the wild, they would soon perish because of the colder climate. But in Florida, this is not the case, and most invasive species populations started from escaped pets. And in today's video, I'll be once again going through some of these problem species, as I'll be going through five invasive species that can be found in Florida. And for our first animal, we'll be traveling over to India, as we have the Axis deer. In their native range, they're most commonly found in grasslands and open forests. They very rarely move into areas of dense jungle, as it would be very hard for them to move around. In these areas, they mainly grazes and browses, and feed on a variety of grasses throughout the year. Like with many other deer species, there is a lot of sexual dimorphism, with males measuring around 20 centimeters taller at the shoulder. Their size may deter some predators, but there is one very famous cat that likes to prey on these deer. Indian tigers have hunted these deers for thousands of years, and they are their most abundant prey species. Although there are very few tigers in the wild nowadays, these axis deer still need to stay alert. Surprisingly, they have formed a mutual relationship with the langurs, who help them look out for these tigers. Both these species are constantly looking out for tigers and react to one another's alarm calls. These axis deer also benefit from food dropped by the langurs, so they have proved to be a very good species to have around. Because of their unique coat and their size, they are regarded as one of the prettiest deer species in the world. Axis venison is also considered to be one of the finest in the world, so these factors have led to them being introduced into many countries around the world. In the 1860s, these deer were introduced into Hawaii, as they were a gift from Hong Kong to the king. There was another introduction in one of the other islands in the 1950s, and this was to increase the hunting opportunities. Because these deer had no natural predators on the Hawaiian Islands, their population continued to grow around 20 to 30% a year. These deer were also introduced into Texas, and soon spread to other parts of the country. Although there aren't as many axis deer in Florida as there is in Texas, they can still cause a few problems. These axis deer are known to compete with the native white-tailed deer, having a negative effect on their population. Although some native predators hunt these deer, they have little natural predators in Florida, meaning that their population can grow very quickly. It was originally thought that these invasive deer may succumb to diseases, but they've proven to be very hardy and more resistant than the native deer. So although they are one of the prettiest deer species in the world, they are still invasive over large parts of North America. But for our next species, we'll be heading to both Central and South America, as we have the nine-banded armadillo. This armadillo's ancestors originated in South America, but after the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, they were able to enter North America as a part of the Great American Interchange. Since this time, they have continued to spread northwards, and today it is the most widespread of all the armadillos. In its native range, it's found in a variety of habitats, from rainforest to grasslands and dry shrublands. In these areas, it is mainly an insectivore, but will also feed on the eggs of birds and reptiles. On this diet, they reach a maximum size of around 60 centimeters, making them a relatively small mammal. The name armadillo means little armored one. This refers to their bony armor-like plates along their body. Although they curl up to protect themselves from predators, they are unable to curl up into perfect balls, as only two species of armadillo can actually do this. Over the last few hundred years, these armadillos have been spreading northwards, and it's thought that they haven't yet reached the full extent of their possible range. They won't be able to fully take over the US, as they're unable to tolerate cold winters and harsh frosts. Many people have questioned if the nine-banded armadillo is actually an invasive species, as they're a much-loved species and seem to have little negative effects on the ecosystem. But these armadillos are great burrowers and cause damage to many properties, such as gardens, golf courses, and cemeteries. These armadillos have also been blamed for the decrease in quail and sea turtle numbers, as they have a fondness for their eggs. So even though they're very cute and lovable, they are still a natural invasive species. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Southeast Asia, as we have the bullseye snakehead. These fish are normally found in large, open, slow-moving bodies of water, and are often associated with aquatic vegetation. In these areas, they are famously aggressive carnivores, feeding on amphibians, insects, and other fish. On this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 1.8 meters, but in their native range, they are still preyed upon by other predators. This is the reason for the bullseye spot on their tail, as this acts like a fake eye, tricking predators into attacking its tail. The bullseye snakehead was first documented in Florida in the year 2000, and as many of Florida's waters are very heavily vegetated, it's the perfect habitat for these snakeheads. It's thought that these snakeheads were either released illegal pets or escaped farm fish, but snakeheads as a whole have proven to be one of the hardest invasive species to get rid of, as the northern snakehead has already taken over large parts of the US. The bullseye snakehead is limited to warmer waters, so luckily they aren't able to spread throughout the country. One of the reasons why snakeheads are so 
successful is that they're great parents. They are known to aggressively protect their young, which means a lot of these fry will make it to adulthood. As these snakeheads feed on so many food items, they can affect a large number of species in Florida, and because of this there are no limits on how many snakeheads you can keep. This unfortunately has led to some native species suffering, as their native bowfin look very much like the snakeheads, and are often mistakenly targeted. But unfortunately this is just one of the many species of fish that are now invasive in Florida. But for our next species we'll be heading to tropical South America, as we have the common boa constrictor. This large non-venomous species of snake can be found in a wide range of habitats, from tropical rainforest to arid semi-desert country. Like the anacondas, these snakes are also very capable swimmers, and are often found around water. But these snakes don't just stick to aquatic environments, as they're also great climbers and can often be seen hunting in trees. They feed on a wide variety of animals in the wild, such as birds, small mammals, lizards and amphibians. As their name suggests, they are constrictors, and shut off vital blood flow to the heart and brain of its prey. These snakes were thought to have arrived in Florida in the 1970s, mainly as escaped or released pets. As these are very large pets and can live for over 40 years, some people decide they don't want these snakes anymore, and instead of responsibly rehoming them, they release them into the wild. Southern Florida has a huge invasive snake problem, with boas, anacondas, and Burmese pythons all being found in the Everglades. This has led to a huge decrease in native mammal populations, and these snakes have even targeted alligators. This has had a huge impact on one of the most biodiverse places in the USA, and there are many efforts to help control these snakes. But unfortunately for now, this is just another large snake that now calls Florida home. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the tropical areas of Asia, as we have the red whiskered bulbul. In the wild, this species is mainly found in lightly wooded areas, and also enjoys open country and farmland. In these areas, it mainly feeds on the fruits of tropical plants, and also nectar and insects. This beautiful bird reaches an average size of around 20 centimeters, and has a dashing red mark on its cheek. To feed on the wide variety of fruits that they do, they have a built-in toxic immunity, as they are often known to feed on many plants and fruits that are toxic to other animals. But how did this striking fruit-eating bird make its way to Florida? To find the answer, all we need to do is look into Florida's weather. As a subtropical area, there are often many hurricanes, and these hurricanes destroy many landscapes and property. In 1960, a hurricane blew through a tourist attraction in Dade County, and this tourist attraction housed some red-whiskered bulbuls. These birds escaped after this natural disaster, and since then have multiplied. As they are relatively small species, they don't have a huge effect on the ecosystem, but are known to compete with native birds, and also have effect on agriculture, as they are known to feed on many of the fruits in the area. As these are relatively small factors, some see them as introduced and not invasive, and they are by far not the worst offenders in Florida. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other areas that you want me to cover, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.